to do exceedingly abundantly much more than we can think and much more than we can ever imagine amen who would have thought that the humble son of god would come down and would be born in a manger amen but he came for our sake and we give him all the glory amen, amen.
worship God. Amen. Amen. Let's just begin to tell you to God the Lord, please have mercy on us. It's by His mercy, Lamentation 322. Say, by His mercy, we are not consumed. Let's just begin to thank Him. Indeed, let's just begin to exalt His holy name. By your mercy, we are not consumed. Lord, have mercy upon us, Lord. Let us know make sure of your glory. Come short of your glory. That we have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us Father, have mercy upon us, Lord. As a church, have mercy. As a nation, have mercy. As a family, have mercy upon us, Lord. It's by your mercy you are not consumed. Lord, have mercy upon us, Lord. That your loving kindness upon us, Lord. It's by your mercy, not our faithfulness, not our walking, Lord. By your compassion that filled me not. Let us get us, Lord. Lord, we are grateful. Let us begin to give you thank you. And that thing, you know, every little vision of his glory. Let me give you tell you how mercy upon us. Because the book of Jeremiah 16, verse 5, he says that who those that live in sin, God said, I will take my peace, I will take my mercy, I will take my loving kindness from them. Because my people are sinned against him. So sin is what we need this time before us. Not to get the mercy of God, not to get his loving kindness, but not to get his compassion. Let me even tell you that we have mercy upon us. In the name of our vision of the glory, come show me the glory. Because we did this morning that we want to stand one before you, God. We don't want to leave this world or come before you this morning, Lord. We don't want you to be like a regular routine, Lord. We want to touch you, Lord. We want you to touch us, Lord. Touch us, Father, Lord. So indeed, we live here blessed. Indeed, we live here nourished. Indeed, we really we live here rejuvenated in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. As a nation, have mercy. In any way, Lord, we endorse the righteousness, Lord. In any way, Lord, we bring our consent, Lord. Or know you, Lord. Or know you, Lord. Have mercy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. We ask for your mercy. Let your heavens be open for us this morning. And your mercy be poor upon us as a nation. In you, your mercy be poor upon us as your children. This morning, Lord, you will corporately, Lord, individually in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Amen. I want to thank God, Lord, especially now that this point is going to run it up, we are going to a new year. We say, Father, Lord, every of your plans you have for me, hide your plans you have for me, your manifestation, hide it from the end, Lord. Hide it from them, Lord. Hide every plan and manifestation. Because indeed, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, this is it was the birth of the coming of Jesus. Indeed, his coming was hidden from the end because they did not know. They did not even know the plan of God. So that's what your plan you have for us. As you were in the season for the marking and celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, as it would be the word being was going to be born, but the main purpose, Lord, you hid it. Lord, your purpose for our lives, Lord, individually and collectively, even now and beyond, that we hide it from the enemies. Lord, hide it from the enemies. Let's begin to pray that, Lord, that which is working in our life, Lord, that which is manifesting in our life, Lord, even from now and beyond, Lord, let it be hidden from the from the, from the sight, Lord, even from the knowing of the enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. Individually, collectively, Lord, as a church, Lord, help us, Lord, that is that which is working in our lives, Lord, that is that which you will do that, Lord, that we need to be hidden from the enemies and the wicked of in the name of Jesus Christ. Your plan and your manifestation, Lord, we want the known by the enemies in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that is now and beyond, Lord, individually, collectively, we pray that, Lord, that which you will be working in our lives, Lord, that you will manifest in, Lord, your plan and your purpose for us, they will not understand, they will not understand, they will not understand. Exposed only to such people 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let us be exposed to this logical in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that will help our life, those that will enhance our life, those that will come to our life and beautify our lives, Lord. Help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Exposed us what is the logical in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to pray again this prayer when another dimension. We we'll say, Father, even if the enemy is seeing what you are doing, mm -hmm. because indeed they saw that Jesus was born, but they did not even know what he was going to become, what he was going to do. If even like the life of Joseph, even his brother, they did saw he was going to be great, mm -hmm. but they did not even understand what was going, what God was working out in his life. No, so indeed, even if the enemy they are saying what you are doing in my life, even if they are sensing this is what you are doing in my life, then you are taking me to this another level of glory, Father Lord. All that you've been doing. To them, they might, they might be thinking they are doing something bad for me. But all they will be doing will be working in my favor Amen. in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray and tell it to God. Lord, it will be giving the enemy is sensing. Even the enemy is seen. But indeed, whatever they will be doing, we will work for my favor in the name of Jesus. We will work for our favor in the name of Jesus. Open our life, every aspect of our life, all that concerns us, Lord. Even if the enemy is seen. Enemy sensitive, even any move they are making, he didn't work for our favor, he didn't work for our favor, he didn't work for our good in the name of Jesus Christ, he didn't help us get to the next level, he did whatever of their plans will be, whatever of their schemes will be, he did to be like a ladder that will take us to the next level. Open every aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ, open every aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ, open every aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, for Jesus. Mighty names, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I want us to pray this prayer thing to God. Lord, surprise me. Mm. Lord, surprise me. You were a believer. God surprised me because a, a thousand years before my is just like a day before God. So indeed, I want us to tell it to God. Lord, surprise me. Before this year runs out, Lord, surprise me. Lord, let us begin to tell it to God. The man before the depth of our heart, let's begin to remember. Maybe something we'll be trusting God for. Lord, just surprise me. Lord, surprise me. Lord, it might not be something I'm thinking about. Because indeed, we're calling it a surprise. Surprise is something we do not even know about. Something we do not plan for. Something we are not aware of. But indeed, Lord, that thing, Lord, that is surprise us. Lord, surprise us, Lord. Do something. Major in our life in the name of Jesus for the remaining second, from the remaining minutes, from the remaining week for this year to come to an end. Indeed, that is surprise us. Surprise every household of the city of God, Lord Timothy. Surprise every family, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Surprise everyone here this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Even everyone who is watching online, that is surprise them in the name of Jesus Christ. If you come and make manifest in their life, only what you can do in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, surprise them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, surprise those at the church in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I'm doing that which you can do in the name of Jesus Christ. And we did that in your testimony, Lord. People will come, Lord, in this in this sanctuary, Lord, and we'll come and testify. There will testimony God, Lord, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. Lord, as we proceed in our service, we ask for your open heavens upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Nobody will live here the same way they've come in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And let your presence, Lord, envelop us, Lord, throughout that the service in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, God the Father. Thank you, God the Son. Amen. Thank you, God the Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' mighty, beautiful, marvelous name we have prayed.
saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him.
without them, this would not have happened. We practice online on Zoom. <laughs> COVID precautions and the kids did great. Thank you, moms and dads. Thank you for making this happen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time for the choir's part of the carol session. So please join us if you know this song. So our first hymn for the day is O Come, O Ye Pushkin, Joyful and Triumphant.
Bring me word again that I may come and worship you also. May God bless the reading of his words in Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, the reality is that the world was in a sinful state and God sent his child, Jesus Christ, to reconcile us to God, to himself. And this whole issue of Jesus coming was to demonstrate God's love for us. John 3 16, which is a very popular text, says, For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed will not perish but have what? Everlasting life. So God gave his only begotten son that anybody that can believe in Jesus Christ will have what? Everlasting life. And therefore, the primary reason why Jesus prayed was to reconcile men to God. It was to reconcile men to God. And that's because God loves us so much. However, God's eyes, the Bible says, cannot behold iniquity, which means God cannot see sin. He cannot fellowship with sinners. And so he had to send his own son to come and reconcile us. Romans 5, 1 to 2, and then verse 6 to 8. Romans 5, 1 to 2, verse 6, then 6 to 8. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, let's read together. We yeah. have. Let's start. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into His grace, where we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory. Verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man we all die. Yet, for adventure, for a good man, some will even die. Yeah, but God commanded, us it, but God commanded his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That was the main reason to reconcile us back to God. Now, children of God have come to remind us that our righteousness does not qualify us for God's love. Because if our righteousness qualified us for God's love, then it means that God didn't even have sent his son in the first place. And that is what they call unconditional love. Am I making sense to us? That's what they call unconditional love. And when you come to God, everything about your life becomes better. Everything about your life becomes better. If only we can accept this gift called Jesus Christ. When you are enjoying wealth, if you have Jesus added to the world, you will enjoy it better. Even when you are going through stormy waters of life, when you are going through troubles and challenges, with Jesus in your boat, it becomes easier, it becomes better. Life struggles become better if we can accept Christ. Now, who is this Jesus? I describe him. Um, there are so many different descriptions about Jesus. Isaiah 9 6 it says, He's wonderful counselor, everlasting father, prince of peace, right? And it says, The government of the world will be upon his shoulders, right? That is a description. There are so many descriptions of Jesus today. We have so many. We can't just finish mentioning them here. But I describe him God as God in human skin. As God in what? Human skin. And if you can know this Jesus, if you can understand him, and why he was here here on earth then a lot of things about our lives will be sorted out a lot of issues about our lives will be sorted out the bible calls him emmanuel god with us he is what emmanuel god with us and god with you is not just god with you when life is on the high notes you know you have those friends that are there only when your life is hunky dory only when things are beautiful only when you buy a new car have you realized that when life is getting better your circle of friends become bigger and bigger it starts growing am i making sense to us however we have jesus as the emmanuel god with us on the hilltop and in the valley so whatever you're going through this jesus is still there with you he knows how you feel he knows what it feels like to be born in a manger how many of you were born in a manger how many how many? That means when you were born, there were more animals than human beings. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many? Nobody here. So Jesus knew all these things, right? Oh, you were a baby, you were crawling all over the house, you had mukha running out of your nose. I was just imagine. Jesus would have passed all these things to his 
crawled, he did everything, and there were no tabrooms, nothing. So you can imagine maybe he was just crawling on bare sand and everything like that. And this is Jesus that came to save you and me. May the Lord help us understand the love that God has towards us in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus is an expression of God's love for us. We saw that in John chapter 3, verse 16. And he made it possible for your past to be forgiven, for your present to be purposeful, and he also gives us an assurance of an eternity in heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. I hope somebody is getting an understanding of Jesus, what he is, and who he is to us. Now, no matter how far you are from God, I've come to remind you that God's love is so wide that you can never go past the boundaries of God's love. Your human capacity, am I making sense to us? Yeah. Your human capacity to commit sin is still lower than the width of the boundaries of God's love for you. That is something we need to know. And if you think you are falling so deep in sin, well, God's love is so deep that even while you are at the rock bottom, his love can pick you up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And if you think, oh, Pastor, you don't understand, I've committed so many sins. Well, the truth is that I wrote here that God's love is also so high that He can overlook all your bad choices. You may have made mistakes in the past, but the reality is that if you succeeded out of those millions of spams, you succeeded in the conception race, then it means you are not a mistake. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You know the conception rate, right? They say that there are so many sperm swimming towards one egg yeah. and only one sperm. I say, ah, if I was victorious, even when I didn't do anything, yeah. right? Then who yeah. will not convince me that I'm not victorious now? Yeah. We are all victorious in Jesus' name. Yeah. Romans 8 35 to 39. Romans 8 35 to 39. I want us to read it and I want you to personalize it as you read it. Romans 8 35 to 39. We have to respect. Let's go. Who shall separate me from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for this father. Nay, in all these things, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Tell somebody, God loves you. God He's crazy about you. In fact, he gave, he killed his son just for you. <laughs> tell them, tell them, that's how crazy God is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, it's so unfortunate that with all the beautiful things that Jesus represents, some of us still celebrate Christmas and we miss the actual blessings that come with Christmas. We focus on the earthly gifts and ignore the heavenly gifts. Praise the Lord. A lot of us will focus on the Christmas meal. Um, or, or, well, here, Turkey is for Thanksgiving. In the other side of the Atlantic, Christmas is for Turkey. Or Turkey is for Christmas. We focus on the food, we focus on everything, and we lose track of the gift itself. And, brethren, the reality is that studying the Bible, you will find that it's not a new trend. From the days of the time when Jesus was born, you had people who missed the essence of Christmas. And here I wrote that there are, of all those that missed the essence of Christmas, there are three we want to study here. One, in the Christmas story, we saw that the innkeepers, they missed Christ. They did what? They missed Christ. If you look at that, Luke 7, Luke 2, 7 that we read, Luke 2, 7, the Bible says that she brought forth her firstborn and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, if the innkeeper knew who Jesus, Mary was carrying in her womb, she would have found a room for Mary. If they have to kick somebody out of the inn, right? They would do that just to make room for Mary. You know, I, I, I was talking, there was a, when, when my dad passed on, so one of my friends who happened to be a top government official now came for the funeral. So that evening, 
the following, okay, I think the, that very late in the night, I was now like, I now called her, I like, hope you settle down. She said, yeah, yeah, she went to the hotel, the biggest hotel in town, obviously, that they told her there was no space. Uh, so she said she needed to see the manager. They said, yeah, close. She said, you see my head. She came with, you know, police escort and everything. And she said, you see my escort, we'll, we'll, we'll make a mess here if I don't see the manager. And then they brought the manager, and the manager said everywhere was blue. She said, look, this is my ID. I'm a government official. You know I cannot go to any hotel because they can attack us there, this, this, this. So you need to make room for me tonight in this hotel. Lo and behold, within 30 minutes, a room showed up. Who was kicked out? I don't know. Am I making sense here? But what I'm trying to say is if men can do that for another man, what do you think the innkeeper would have done for the king of glory if they knew this is the king of glory? Am I talking to us here? Yeah. And here I said, even though Bethlehem was crowded at the time, obviously because they ordered census, so everybody went home. It's like Christmas season in the villages, everybody's around, right? That if the association of innkeepers knew who Mary was carrying in her room, there would have been a contest among the association of innkeepers on who we host Mary. Right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody will want to know. But unfortunately, they didn't know about Christ. They didn't know and in the same way a lot of us today we have the truth of the seasons we enjoy the season but we don't know the christ that is in the season it's like going for start this last birthday by the way it was a it was a good one for all those that showed up praise the lord yeah it's like going for her birthday and you don't know her and you don't care to know her you only came for the food you eat the food and when you see sister bisola passing you don't even know this is sister bisola Am I talking to you? You just focus on the food. And at the end of the day, you eat the food and you go home. So some people are really like that. Some people are really like that. May God help us get it right in Jesus' name. Amen. So I wrote here that basically the innkeepers missed Christ because they didn't know much about Christ. They didn't know much about what? Christ. That was ignorance. Ask yourself, am I ignorant about Christ? Nobody is asking. Am I ignorant about Christ? Amen. Praise the Lord. Herod, on the other hand, also missed Christ. Even though he had all the information about Christ, he also missed the Savior. And you know, it's so sad that a king is born or was born in his domain and God didn't show it to him. That was a big error on his part. And you know, the text we read showed that Herod also missed Christ. Why did Herod miss Christ? Whatever reason why Herod missed Christ is still a reason why a lot of us miss Christ today. So let's not be quick to blame Herod. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tell somebody, don't be quick, don't be quick. to judge Herod. To judge Herod. Amen. Amen. Now, like Herod, a lot of us don't have room for two kings in our lives. Am I making sense? I'm the king and commander in chief of the forces of my life. God, keep your opinion. Praise the Lord. Your finance and some of us, we allow God to rule one part of our life, but we don't let him rule the other parts. Right? My finances, God, just stay away. Right? Or my marriage, my relationship, God, stay away. You can have a good thing. That is the reality. Herod didn't have space for two kings. He wanted only one. He wanted only one. So of us, I don't here, we don't mind Jesus being around our vicinity as long as he doesn't try to rule everything. One of the ways we miss Jesus is trying to rule your own life, trying to dictate your own life, trying to be your own king, trying to manage everything yourself. And the Bible shows us there that where Jesus is not accepted, there will be trouble, there will be problem. Look at the problem that happened. They killed every boy that was below the age of two. That must have been a big problem. Because one person is not willing to accept Christ. And today, a lot of us too, we run into troubles in our lives, in our finances, in our relationships, in our spiritual life. You know, some of us, we eat three square meals in the dream. Some of us, we run 100 meters, 200 meters in the dream because masculines are chasing us. And all sorts happen, praise the Lord, because 
we don't want to accept Christ as our Lord, our Savior. When we serve food today, some people will say, well, I, I don't, I'm not hungry. Did you eat breakfast? No, I ate overnight. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I had to <laughs> That's his problem. And that is because we are not welcoming God into a certain area of our life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Those listening to me that are not Africans might not understand, but the Africans understand what it means to, to, to be in the dream and you sit down with the in fact, they will go and hunt the meat while you are there in the dream. They will cook it while you are there. You will smell it in the dream. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May God help us in Jesus' name. I say, may God help us in Jesus' name. So, if we must get it right, if we must get it right, Jesus must overrule all our decisions. Jesus must be the Lord and Savior of our lives. Am I making sense to someone? So, I put there as a conclusion that Herod missed Jesus Christ because of pride and selfishness. How many of us today are too proud to let Jesus dictate for us what we should do? How many of us are too selfish to let Jesus dictate for us what we should do? May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. A third set of people that are that miss Christ and don't judge these people. I'm selling us because I want us to examine ourselves. Praise God. Matthew chapter 2 verse 3 to 6. We read that Matthew of chapter 2, verse 3 to 6. I want us to read together and see the third category of people that missed it. The Bible says in verse 3, it says, when Herod the king had these things, he was troubled. Let's read together. Let's verse 3. When Herod the king had these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had verse 4, and when, and when they had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Verse 5. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Now, Herod didn't know exactly where Jesus was to be born, but he got information because he had the scribes and the Pharisees around him. Am I talking to us? The Bible says he gathered the chief priests together. Now, these chief priests, they knew where Christ was to be born, right? And they told it to Jesus, uh, to Herod, where he was to be born. As a matter of fact, they quoted the scripture. They quoted Michael, Michael chapter 5, verse 2. They quoted Michael chapter 5, verse 2. We said, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, do thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Now, if you look at the Time between when Michael made this prophecy and the time when Jesus was born, it was about 700 years. Wow. Right? So, so these guys, they knew what? The scripture. Yet, none of them went to Bethlehem to look for Jesus. They stayed put. Praise God. Instead, you had wise men who probably didn't go to the seminary, who probably didn't study theology. They were the ones that did what? came to look for Jesus. So the question I'm asking you today is that you probably know all the scriptures, you can quote them, but uh, is your life leading you to Jesus? Is your life leading others to Jesus? Am I talking to us here today? If we know the scripture and the written word is not leading us towards Jesus who is the living word, then we are like this chief priest. Tell somebody, look at somebody, say, Are you a chief priest? Are you a chief priest? <laughs> Ask them. Say, The way I'm looking at you, I need to investigate properly. Are you a chief priest? <laughs> Ask somebody next to you, Are you a chief priest? <laughs> Praise God. Get an answer. Get, get, get the next question. Yes. Are you a chief priest? 
A lot of us have become chief priests. We know the scripture, we know everything. If you say, hey, quote this, we will quote it, quote that, we will quote it. However, our life is just going the other way. Brethren, Jesus said to his apostles in John chapter 6, verse 63. John 6, 63 says, It is the spirit that witnessed. The flesh was profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words are spirit. The words must bring a new spirit in you. The words of Jesus Christ, the words of the Bible must revive you. They must bring new life in you. If it's not bringing new life in you, then the only thing you have are the letters. And the Bible says that the letters, it does what? It profited nothing. It killed it. Thank you, brother. The letter does what? It killed it. So check yourself. If all you know are the letters and you don't have that spirit living in you, you are not living a godly life, you know yourself in the closet, then you are like the chief priest. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. I say, may God deliver us in Jesus' name. So I wrote it here that unless your knowledge of the Bible leads you to a deeper walk with the Savior, then the knowledge of the Bible will have little or no meaning in your life. If you are not on your way to Jesus, you are on your way to hell, even if you know the scriptures. It is better to know less and go to Jesus without letting you know that to know more and stay away from Jesus in your daily life. Am I making sense to us? And I remember when I first started going to church, you know, there was a season in my life, I was brought up in the Catholic Church, then there was a season I said, you know what, God doesn't exist, I joined the gate, I said, if the gate became the richest man without believing God, why do I need God? Little did I know that the story of the gate's history is different from my history. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. yeah, some of these people in the U.S., if you read about their history, you find out that they had forefathers, great-grandfathers that served God, seriously. That the prayers of those people is still working on even the children, the great grandchildren. I read the story of Jesse Penn, the guy had been paid tax all along. I read the story of John D. Rockefeller. The Bible says that, not the Bible, the um, internet says that from his first, first paycheck he started paying tax. And then in 1890, John D. Rockefeller turned a small Baptist college into an Ivy League school by donating $90 million to. A Baptist college in Chicago. That Baptist college is today called the University of Chicago. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then that most children or grandchildren will just get into a business and they will succeed. And they will say, Oh, there's no God. The prayer of their forefathers is still working for them. You, your grandfather, your great grandfather, if you trace it well, you will find out the harvest. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So you don't compare yourself to some people. I was reading some documentation about the game, and I discovered that this John D. Rockefeller, when they dismantled his company, right, Standard Oil, they formed, I think, about 13 companies, so I can't remember the name of the number of companies. The Standard Oil Company, one of them is today's BP, one of them is today's Chevron, one of them is today's Texaco. One man's company was split into all these many companies. One of them is Konoko, which is Konoko Philips today. So many oil companies from that one one. However, he had a spiritual mentor, a Baptist priest, who was called something Robert Gates. And now they are tracing Robert Gates to the history of Bill Gates, that he was an uncle to Bill Gates. That, so I said all along that Bill Gates must have come from a rich family. Because you can't be from a poor family and drop out from Harvard, and you and your parents did not fight Stone World War. <laughs> yeah. Am I making sense? Because it's not cheap to go to Harvard. So he must have come from a rich family. I started tracing, 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 and I discovered that truly his parents were wealthy. How did they get their wealth? They were related to some people that had money. So don't compare yourself to people. Brethren, try to get your own knowledge. So going back to the story I was saying, that I stopped going to church, I stopped doing everything, I was like, there's no God, nothing. And then after a while, God started showing me some of these truths. And I realized that, you know what, if I want to make any meaningful thing out of my life, I better just go. Because what I've inherited from my great grandfather is so bad that <laughs> I will end up in serious troubles in life. So I started going to church. But you know what? I did. I will go to church once a month. That once I will listen to everything they say. Then for the next three weeks, I'm trying to practice what they say. 
So I refuse to go to church the following Sunday because I'm like the one I left last Sunday. I'm not finished practicing it. I'm not going to do it. Am I making sense? But now I see that it is working for me because now every day I go to church, I'm listening with rapt attention, trying to get things that I can practice. So are you just coming to church as a routine or are you coming to get things you can practice? May God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So brethren, the bottom line is that the written word must lead us to God. If it does not lead us to God, then we are not we are well chief priests we are simply chief priests and here i wrote that a lot of us today are chief priests because our everyday decisions are not brought before god because we feel we don't need god's counsel those chief priests they didn't go to bed they had to look for jesus they probably because they felt they didn't need jesus afterwards if they needed jesus they would have gone to look for christ and a lot of us are like that today. We feel we don't need God to solve our problems. We try to solve our problems for ourselves. And when we try to solve them, we try to solve them in our own way. We don't follow biblical principles. The result is that we create more problems for ourselves and for others. And it's not new. Abraham tried it. He was, God says, I'll give you a child. Then he tried to solve the problem. Him and Sarah. By going into Haggai. Uh, is that yes. yes. Right? And they have Israel. And today we see what the Ishmaelites are doing. They are not just troubling Abraham's family, they are giving the whole world trouble. Praise the Lord. May God help us in Jesus' name. I say, May God help us in Jesus' name. So I wrap up by asking you Is Christ in your Christmas? Is Christ in your Christmas? If Christ is not in your Christmas, you can as well join Obama and the others to call it Happy Holidays. And just call it a holiday. Praise the Lord. If there is no Christ, then it is just a holiday because there is no point celebrating Christmas. I have some questions here that I want to leave us with. Are you missing the Christ in the Christmas because you don't know Christ and the benefits he brings? Or are you missing Christ because you are too proud to allow Christ to rule over your decisions? Or are you missing Christ because you have become too religious, too religious and you read through the letters but you don't welcome the spirit and the leading and the guidance of the word of God. If you got the name of Christmas right, then you will make it. But if we don't, then we might as well just be celebrating a holiday. I pray that the Almighty God will help us all in Jesus' name. I say, I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Can we rise up on our feet this morning? And wherever you are, even those online, I just say, Father, help me get it right this season, O Lord. King of glory, help me get it right, O Lord. The shed of days, help me get it right, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, El Shai, God, help me, O Lord. Abba, Father, help me, O Lord. Get it right with Christ. In the name of Jesus, Masin, the Negate, Kuriba, Sandaya. Just talk to God and begin to mention to God the blessings that comes with, with, with Christmas, ask the Lord that joy, that knowledge of Christ that I need in my life, help me get it, O oh Lord. Father, the humility I need to accept Christ as my Lord and as my Savior, Father, release unto me in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord God Almighty, we ask, O oh Lord, that you will help us, that we will not become too religious, that we will not become too religious to accept Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, just talk to God this morning. Just mention to God that area of your life where you need God to rule. That area of your life where you know in their heart of hearts that you have not submitted to the will and authority of God. That area of your life where you know that you are still arguing with God. That area of your life where you know you have not let go to the control of the Almighty God. Just tell it to Him right now and say, Father, help me, O Lord. Help me yield authority to you. Help me yield control to you. Help me yield my life to you. Every area of my life, O Lord. Father, send your help, O Lord. King of glory, send your help, O Lord. Just mention to God that area of your life where you need his attendance, where you need him to help you. Father, Lord, we ask for your help. That this season we will not be Christ, O Lord. We will not dwell on the chief. We will not dwell on the merriment of the season. 
Lord God, we will focus on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. Ancient of days, we bless your holy name. We give you all the praise, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Be thou exalted, Lord. Be thou magnified, King of glory. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. It has come, Lord, in the simplicity with which it came. Lord, help us to make something meaningful out of it. Help us examine our lives, O Lord. That indeed, Lord, our lives will be blessed. That indeed, Lord, we will not miss the essence of this man. That indeed, Lord, we will not miss the real gifts that you have given to us this evening. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father in heaven. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a wonderful word. Amen. 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 Great word. It's offering time, people of God. Amen. Merry Christmas to you. Merry it Christmas. is time to give our tithes and our offerings unto the Lord. And this the season that we reflect on everything that he gave to us he gave his all to us and so it shouldn't be hard for us to give our all to him so if you have prepared your tithes those who um, have also paid their tithes uh, during the week please you are um, welcome to come forth um, those who want to pay their tithes please come forth first tithers Come forth. If you paid your tithe already online, come forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you for those who have brought forth their tithes to you, those who have brought their 10% to you, God, in obedience to your word. Father, you said that we can prove you in this. If you will not open up the windows of heaven, Father, you said you will rebuke the devourer. So, Father, all we have to do is say thank you in advance. Thank you, Lord, for what you have already done. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for the sources of income that you have provided for your people. God, we give you the glory for it. Father, you will make none to lack any good thing, Father. We thank you for it, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if you're ready to bring your offerings, please prepare your offerings. Please prepare your offerings unto the Lord. You can pay through Zelle. Those of you who are watching online, you can pay your offerings through Zelle. You can pay through PayPal. And you can also pay using the email address, finance at rccgbaltimore.com. Org. Again, that email address is finance at rccgbaltimore.org. We prefer that you use Zell, please. And you can also give to Cash App using the handle rccgbaltimore. That is rccgbaltimore. You can also swipe your cards if you want to do so. If you want to pay using your card today, just let um, someone know that you want to pay by your card. All right? And if you want to pay by checks, please make your checks payable to RCCG City of God. That is RCCG City of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we thank God for your offerings and those, um, the, uh, the choir will come forth now as we bring forth your offerings. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah! Amen. Praise the Lord, 
Let's thank Him for His love. Let's thank Him for bringing us here today. Let's thank Him for the child that was sent, that for the eyes that was sent into the world to die for us. Let's say, Father, we thank You. Our Father, we thank You. King of glory, we exalt Your holy name. Station for this, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. We say thank you. Machine, the yeti tika riba standa ya. Rada full the yaka tika riba standa ya. Just say, Father, I thank you for the gift of Christ. What would my life have been if Christ had not come? What would life have been for us if we didn't have the power of Christ? Father, we say thank you. Then shall I God bless your holy name. We give you all the praise, O Lord. We give you all the honor, all the adoration. Be thou exalted, O Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Can we just sing this song? We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Thank you. 
Jesus Christ infused into my life by heavenly forces. This will be great for me because I am powered by the Holy Spirit. To the power and the grace. Amen. God bless you. Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Feliz 